Hey guys, you know what they said about the year 2020? It went viral faster than anyone thought it would. On with the show! Welcome back to Creatures, Cowards, and Crafting. Today we're going to do a basic build for beginner crafters. And this is going to be a post-apocalyptic building. I'm going to use some very basic materials such as cardboard, tape, glue, maybe some paint, and some flocking. This comes as part of a challenge that was brought forth by four guys of Broken Dwarf off of Instagram. To start off with, we're going to go ahead and get a template and we're just going to put this down. This will be very easy. You can find these online or you can make them yourself and use Microsoft Paint. I highly recommend that you do this. If you don't have a printer, you can always just measure it. Now we're also going to use a thin piece of cardboard for this and we're just going to go ahead and start to cut these out once we have them marked. And here we have the template removed and you can notice that I've already marked out the windows using a marker. Now I'm just going to cut this using a utility knife. We always want to be careful when we're using a knife. We want a sharp blade on this to make the cuts very nice and easy. And of course we want to use a, an appropriate cutting surface. You don't want to do this on any fine furniture, okay? So we're just going to cut all these out and then we'll move on to our next step. Next we're going to find a relatively small box to fit the front facade of the building. Notice that the front is very thin cardboard. We don't want anything too thick. We just want these to kind of measure up equally. I'm going to take some modeling paste and I'm going to start to stipple this onto the box. Now I'm only going to cover the top and three sides. I'm going to leave that front alone. Now when we're doing this we want to just kind of smooth it out and allow it to dry and then apply maybe one to two more coats. One thing to note here, if you don't have modeling paste, you don't have to go out and buy this. You could simply just take some Elmer's glue or maybe some Mod Podge and sprinkle some play sand in there. What we're going for here is texture. As our modeling paste is dried, we're going to go ahead and glue the building down to a cardboard base. I'm just using a little hot glue. This will be very easy. If you don't have hot glue, you can use like carpenter's glue, Elmer's glue. All I'm doing is just adding on some additional support to this and just filling in some of those gaps. Now I'm going to take some very thin cardboard strips. And I'm just going to cut these and this is just going to add some more depth to the building. As you notice, I'm just using some very thin cardstock from soda can boxes and I'm just putting this down with some Elmer's glue. Next, we're just going to also apply some modeling paste to the front and allow that to dry. So the one thing about cardboard is you get a lot of gaps between it, especially corrugated cardboard. And to fill that, all you have to do is just take some hot glue and just run a bead down into those gaps like so. And you don't have to use a whole bunch for this. And next we're just going to take that nozzle and just start kind of flattening it out. Now you want to be sure to remove any wisp once you're done. You can do this with a lighter or just pick it off with your hands. And if you don't have a hot glue gun, you could also just take, like I said before, Elmer's glue or something like that. And just pack it in there and let it dry. So for the front of the building, I want to use a matte black spray paint. It's very important that we don't use a high gloss on this. You can apply several coats and you can even go back and use an acrylic black if you want to. Next I'm going to use a gray. This is a uniform gray and I'm just going to hit the sides with the texture on it. So here we have the front of our building and I'm just going to use a ash gray and all I'm doing is just stempling this on. As you can see it kind of blends very well. Now what we want to do is we want to build dark to light. Next I'm going to use a lighter gray and of course we're just going to use the same technique. We're just going to put a little bit on a brush, dab it off on a napkin and just stipple that down. You don't have to go heavy with this, especially with the lighter colors. And this looks really good. It really adds to the texture of the building. And you can build this up as much as you want to. Next, I'm going to use a suede. Now, I'm going to go ahead and hit the entire building with a black wash. Now you can find videos on how to make a black wash. 
It's very simple. If anything, you can just use black paint and water, but there are very good recipes out there. I highly recommend you look at them. Now we're just gonna do a simple dry brush and we're just using a light gray for this process. Dry brush is just putting some paint onto the bristles, wiping that off on a napkin, and just going over the entire building. This part is kind of relaxing for me, so just be very patient, take your time with it. Remember, lightly put this on. All right guys, now it's time to have a little fun. And we're gonna use some clear packaging plastic for some windows. All we're gonna do here is make some very rough cuts. All we want this to do is fit the frame of the window. So nothing exact. And we're just gonna use a little bit of super glue to adhere that to the back of the building. Now notice I have cut out some jagged areas just to make it look like it's been broken. And we're just gonna do this in a few spots. A couple other things you could do is maybe cut up some chipboard. This looks like boards on the back of the window. And you can also add just a wet down napkin and that looks kind of like a dirty curtain. So I'm going to take some wood glue and I'm just going to put this on the back of our facade. Now I want to put enough on here that I get a good adhesion. So make sure you were getting a lot of the edges. We want to try to keep this away from the windows, but if it gets on there, don't worry about it. It's post-apocalypse. Grime is fine. Now notice I've also blacked out the windows more using a craft paint. This just kind of helps me line things up, make it straight. And we're just gonna press that down. And what I'm gonna do is probably place a heavy object. In this case, I'm gonna use a book. And I'm just gonna allow this to dry maybe one to two hours. To create the door, I'm just gonna use some craft wood sticks. Now you can use cardboard for this as well, and I'm using just a little bit of chipboard to look like the door handle. I'm going to make two of these, one for the front and one for the back. I'm going to take some wood glue and put it on, on our base, and now I'm going to just start sprinkling this. This is some cheap kitty litter. Of course it's not used, I wouldn't be that nasty. And I'm also going to mix this with a little bit of playground sand. Just varying difference of aggregate can add a lot of detail. So just spread this on like so. If you don't have this, you can get playground sand for fairly cheap. I think it's like $7 for like a 25 pound bag. And uh, of course, kitty litter you can buy at the dollar store for pretty cheap. Next, I'm just going to seal everything in by spraying this with a mixture of PVA glue and water. We want to get this nice and saturated. And once we've done this, I just put it outside and let it sit for several hours. If you need to reapply this, go ahead and do so, but one to two coats should be enough. Once our sand is dried, I'm just going to hit with a dark brown. Then I'm just going to start dry brushing to a lighter tan or lighter brown color. You can even pick out individual rocks if you like to. It just adds a little bit more detail. This would also be the time that you can add flocking, such as static grass or bushes if you like. I'm also going to freehand draw some graffiti on one of the walls. If you're not comfortable with doing this, that's okay. You can use a marker or you don't have to put anything at all. You could also print out posters using a color printer and just put them on with PVA or Mod Podge. Let's see what this looks like on the table. And here we have our final project. Guys, this was a very basic beginner level craft. And with that said, I wanted to make it as simple as possible to make. I wanted to use very simple techniques and I wanted to use material that was very easy to find. If not free, very cheap. I think that this piece of terrain is very functional. Uh, you should be able to use it on any skirmish game or any tabletop. I think it looks great. It's not going to win any awards and yes I could add a lot more things to it but as a basic building and like the video's titled, I think this is a win. There's a lot of stuff that you could take from here and expand on using more expensive materials, using better techniques, and get something that would look even better. So for you beginner crafters or those that just don't want to spend a lot of money on their crafts, give this a try. Let me know how it turns out. As always, I'll leave you with a nice video for the end. I goodbye you. Hey guys, thanks for tuning in. 
Last night I had a very bad storm hit around my area and I saw these geese outside and I think it's a symbol. Uh, there's a lot of confusion, a lot of frustration, anger and turmoil in the world today. And I think the biggest thing is, is if you come together, you can weather the storm. These geese were fine. Uh, the sun came out and they just came up in the yard and had a wonderful time. But as you watch this, just keep that in mind. I know I don't try to get preachy on you guys, but uh, I just thought I would share this. I hope you guys enjoyed the craft. As always, if you like the video, give me a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't already. And if you have, thank you for doing so. Leave me comments and we'll see you next week. You guys stay safe. Bye.